to elaborate on what I mean by fire lizard. Okay, open the door. In we go. Time to collect stuff. I'll take those. No door over there that I can open up. I'm a bit of a completionist with this sort of game in terms of exploration, you may have noticed, so we're likely to be here a while. Just take that as a warning. If you're easily bored or anything to that effect, then my playthroughs are not going to be for you. And I should level up, actually. Let's put... Well, I assume that being a rogue probably the bow is more affected by dexterity than strength, but I have a lot of dexterity to start. I'll put a couple points into strength just to up my overall damage and the rest into vitality. I'm not getting hit as much as I would be if I was a warrior, true. But also, I'd like to be able to take a hit when necessary. There we go. The lot of you die, please. Your presence is annoying. Thank you. Thank you so much. The way is clear when viewed. The way is made clear when viewed from above. I have no idea what the hell that even means, but okay. I guess. Back to this main route down the hall that I was taking. But since we've explored most of the other bits, I can take the main route now. And open the sarcophagus. Because nothing bad ever happens to adventurers in stories when they open a sarcophagus, right? It all goes fine. And they never have problems because they opened a sarcophagus, clearly. That's how it always goes. Opening a sarcophagi, opening the sarcophagi of the dead is just always good, right? That's how this goes, isn't it? Come on, guys. Well... Well, this game is certainly keeping up with the one convention I do recall from Diablo 3 that literally everything you meet outside of town, minus plot characters, would like you dead. They're following that trend incredibly well. So that's not exactly what I'd... I wouldn't call it nice, but it's a relief to have some similarity however minor it might be, it's the only other Diablo game I have actually played. As I said, played Diablo 3 a couple of times, beat the main quest, if you want to call it that, exactly once, and I just straight up don't give a damn about Diablo 3's story, 
or online for that matter. And it's a zombie again. It took a bunch of tries for me to actually succeed at killing. So, what's over here? Dead things that want me to join them in death. Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Why wouldn't that be what we run into? Dead things that think they're helping us by making us dead, as I like to put it. Come on then, over this way. Two shot kill on that Skeletonia. Just the end of that corridor, or whatever you want to call it. So let's move on. Have a looksy wooksy up here. Nothing, and we've leveled again. Okay, five points to distribute. This time, I will put a couple into a vitality. Please, listen to me. Oh, it just replays the dialogue when I hit the quest uh, from the thing that we got it for. Okay. And that contains nothing. Well, I suppose it would be a little bit unfair if opening every chest gave us loot. And in some respects, I actually think it's kind of neat that there are chests you can open where you don't get rewarded for it, and you just find nothing in there because it kind of reminds me of Dark Souls in that respect, where it shows this as a living world that has other people in it. Because you can see that someone else was here before you and looted that. Or the person who made uh, this area didn't think it was important to store something in that container. It's just kind of some interesting environmental storytelling, basically. Die skeleton? Die skeleton. More dead people who would like me to also be dead. No offense, but I'm not into the whole being dead thing. If it's all the same to you, why don't you just die a second time and we can call it for your death aspirations there. Oh, Timothy in MN. Hello. Is this hell too, you were saying? Um, I'm not sure what you mean. This is base Diablo 1, but it's the version off of GOG. Not sure if that helps at all, but yeah, it's the GOG version of the game. Which, by the way, I should mention again, but you probably missed this, that I have literally never played this game before, so don't expect me to know what I'm doing. Because expecting that is just setting yourself up for tremendous disappointment. And you're saying it looks just like vanilla? Well... Uh, oh, you thought it was a mod? Yeah, I have never even touched this game before. I had it sitting in my GOG library for couple of months now, ever since I bought it and just never played it because of a lack of free time. And a lot of games I don't tend to play modded my first run through. Anything Elder Scrolls or Fallout is the exception, or 
and that sort of thing. But not this sort of thing. And although, to be fair, I did play Baldur's Gate modded the first time around, so that might count to a degree. I'm not sure, though I'm not sure if you'd call that a mod. It was literally just makes the dialogue more like Baldur's Gate 2. It was the mod I added, the NPC project thing. But enough about Baldur's Gate, I guess. Looks like we're done with the first level of this dungeon. And yeah, I would appreciate some help. And such. Just to sort of fill you in on where we are, I am in. I'm doing the butcher quest in the church or whatever, and I'm playing a rogue. I'm currently level three, and there are my stats up on screen, just to give you an idea of where I am. I probably screwed everything up by now, even though it's only two levels in because that generally seems to be how it works with this sort of thing. Or maybe not, who knows, miracles can happen, I guess. I don't have a spell ready. I want a lot of decks for high hit chance. Oh. Yeah, I guess that kind of makes sense. <laughs> Down to the next level. Let's just continue checking this out. By the way, if you don't mind me asking just a little lore thing, what in the hell are those lizard creatures? And are these goblins? Because I don't know what half the stuff is in here. It's definitely been pretty enjoyable so far, I will say that. Especially since my only experience with Diablo before this was I did a single playthrough of Diablo 3's campaign which some people still to this day insist to me is not a Diablo game not that I would know much about whether it is or isn't get my hit chance to at least 80 with dex on a second yeah, my hit percentage right now is about 66%, so just keep boosting that until it's at least 80. Gotcha. Yeah, it's not a logical thing to call them at all, but I just sort of started referring to those lizards as fire lizards even though they have no fire coming off them or anything. And I don't know why I call them that, I just kind of do. <laughs> Another chest with nothing in it. You know, oddly enough, I kind of like that there are chests that you can find without stuff in them. It's kind of like the <laughs> environmental storytelling thing that you get in Dark Souls, where it's kind of cool because <sighs> you can tell just by that that there are other people who were here before, and I just sort of like that. It's a neat way to do things. Even if, as far as getting loot, it's not the best. Also, die skeleton scumbags. Die skeleton scumbags. 
My stats don't matter as much as I think. Really? Interesting. Well, I've not played much in the way of CRPGs, so I'll take your word on that. Like, literally the only thing I play that qualifies in that category, I guess you would say, is Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate 2, and Tyranny. Oh yeah, and Pillars of Eternity. I wasn't counting that for a minute just because I haven't finished it yet. I have this weird thing where if I haven't finished playing a game, I will not count myself as having played it sometimes. I'm not sure why. Eventually the stats max, so the distribution only matters if I need them at that moment. Oh, okay. And, um, let's see, what else was I gonna ask? Oh yeah, is there a level cap in this game? Because I know a lot of games there's either a hard level cap or there's not enough experience you can get off killing enemies in that game to actually level up behind beyond a certain point, so it's kind of like a soft level cap. Sorry about that. My microphone was trolling me a little bit. Uh, oh. Quindel123. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Thanks. Level 50 is the max. Well, considering I'm level 4 now, I don't think we'll be hitting that anytime soon. Don't touch the shrines because they can mess with my stats. Okay. Die, please. Touch them, but check the description first. Great, I have two people in here who are contradicting each other. I can tell this is gonna go great. some skeleton and skeletons okay how about we advance in the opposite direction a little bit was genius. Looks like I got myself killed. Because I didn't move fast enough. Yeah. We're redoing the first level of the dungeon, by the way. Because of my ability to not stay alive. Well done, me. Spectacular, truly. And of course I didn't save after I entered level one. That would be far too sensible. <sighs> By the way, I should probably ask this now, given that I am firing rather a lot of arrows, since I started with the bow as my default weapon, but... Do you have infinite arrows or any, or something like that? Because I noticed in my inventory that it didn't seem to be uh, showing 
you have X number of arrows, like a lot of RPGs like to do, and force you to buy arrows and stuff. I noticed that didn't seem to be a thing, so does the game just give you infinite arrows or something? Huh, ah, that's interesting. Sorry, like I said, the most... Uh, uh, the only RPG from this generation that I've played are the Baldur's Gate ones, which did force me to buy arrows, so I'm a little bit still in that mindset, honestly. Thanks.